This is Byron Lazine and Nicole White, and you are tuned into episode 212 of The Real Word. Word is up. Big news out of the northwest corner of the country. Big news, and it just happened, too. It, like, yeah, it just happened, and we've talked it about saying, it. It's saying we today, it the whole way. but it must have been yesterday. The last few days. This, this just came out, uh, I believe, uh, I put it on my Instagram story. Could have been- Did you? I put it on I, Instagram story right when I saw Real Trends released an email blast, hmm. breaking news email blast. And I love uh, it. I, that night I put it on on my story. Anyways. How'd it do? The, did it do well over there? Oh, that story did great. I'm yeah. sure. All your stories of, do great. A lot of feedback. Yeah. Uh, Byron Lazine, ahead. make sure you, you follow go. him. If you get, get on don't. to the IG. All right. <laughs> Racket number one, judge orders Oregon to pause its home buyer love letter ban. Wow, a U.S. Crazy. district judge agreed these letters can lead to discrimination, but said that the law goes too far in restricting free speech. Uh, I'm pulling right from the Inman article. There's a USA Today article out there. There's a whole bunch of sources that are covering this. You can you can look up any source that you want if you have a Inman paywall or whatever. Mm -hmm. U.S. district uh, district judge. Marco A. Hernandez on Thursday granted a preliminary injunction against Oregon's first of its kind ban on love letters, ordering a temporary halt to enforcement of the law. So love letter. I mean, we've covered this. You guys know what a love letter is. It's when a buyer presents a love letter to a seller, uh, oftentimes through their agent through their on agent. all the reasons why that seller should select them as the buyer. Now, Nicole, remember, the law did not state that a buyer couldn't get this letter to them to to the directly. Uh, to the seller directly. Right. That's right. So you you just couldn't do it as the agent. That was really the law, right? Um or the ban, the ban, yeah. The ban, yeah. yeah. The law does not prevent home buyers from communicating directly with sellers. That is from USA Today. Now, on episode 199, we covered the Pacific Legal Foundation lawsuit mm -hmm. against the state. Uh, attorney Daniel Ortner led the lawsuit for uh, PAC Legal Foundation. I said at that time, so I've got a, I've got a little mud on my face here. Admittedly, I said at that time that this lawsuit was unlikely to win. I may I didn't listen to the whole thing. I may have even went as far as saying, you know, it's more of a PR grab for Pacific Legal Foundation. I'm assuming if that if if that's coming back to you, that's probably what you uh, said. I may have said that. You I'm may not have positive if I did. Bobby can certainly clip it in and make me look even more silly if he wants. But in the end, Pacific Legal Foundation took the case and it looks like they have won the case. So mm -hmm. hats off to them. Uh, they had agents that testified saying this would cause real pain and unhappiness for their clients. Certainly, if you're as working with- As buyer, especially if you're a buyer's agent. <laughs> if you're a buyer's agent, for certainly. Sure. Like what else happen. do you have? Like what's your tactic? Like get rid of home inspections? You know, I mean, there's only- so many home inspections you can drop. Yeah. It's, it's really important for buyers to get this information to sellers, especially when you're dealing with a competitive market like we have right now. So for this for this to have been banned, this this law or the, yeah. the love letter ban is now no longer in Oregon. Right. That'll bring a ripple effect throughout the country. NAR said last year they warned all of its members Right. about these types of letters. Nicole, as an agent, do you just feel totally confident now presenting these letters to sellers on behalf of buyers? I don't, I still, and again, I mean, before the show, we were sort of talking about it. I had never really thought about the implications of it. If, you know, God forbid, enough, especially in this market with so many offers, like we're not talking about two, we're talking about like 15. Mm -hmm. And then we're talking about 15 offers and those other 15 have probably put 15 offers in another home. So Again, the the anger and and frustration of the individuals that are losing out on these properties, I, they could do anything. I mean, they could. Again, it, it still concerns me that they still could go after a seller if they were to catch wind of why they chose the other buyer. And again, so as a listing agent, 
I still am 100% um, warning my sellers on what could potentially happen. And if they choose to look at the letters they do, usually what I do is I'll give them the letter that won afterwards so they at least know who the winner was. Um, but I, again, as a listing agent, I'm not. But I, I'll tell you, I won a, a bid just last week off of a love letter. So as a buyer's agent, I am still 100% recommending all of my buyers to draft them. So, so the ruling, yep. Ortner, the attorney for the uh, Legal uh, Pacific Foundation, said today's ruling preserves the opportunity of home buyers to speak freely to sellers and make the case why their purchase offers should win out. Love letters communicate information that helps sellers select the best offer. The state the cannot ban mm -hmm. important speech because someone might misuse it. This is a direct quote from Ortner, the attorney. Now, the It's funny though cuz again in 199 you talked about how your parents picked a lower offer. Yeah, they did. Because of the, the so like because to it use was the, a, to use because it was a family. Because it was a family. Use, that family use, still lives there today to today. Yeah, and again you can't discriminate based on familial, but here we are saying that it's the best like they're saying that these letters are to help them get well, the best offer. And and here's where the district judge Hernandez he said that while there is significant circumstantial evidence supporting the idea there was no actual evidence within the state that these letters have been used to discriminate when selecting an offer so circumstantially he could say yes i could see to your point nicole how mm -hmm. somebody could get themselves into trouble yes. by discriminating and that that could happen but Oregon didn't have any hard evidence. And by the way, the associations in real estate with all their made up rules and code of ethics that they've pulled out of thin air and levied on their members have also often come with no evidence. We have a situation in Connecticut that we know far too well where they changed the ruling on teams in the state. You have to now be called a certain name. You have to uh, you know, pay extra money. You can only do X, Y, and Z. They made all these rules up January 1st in the state of Connecticut with no actual evidence. The Department of Consumer Protection in Connecticut and the Connecticut Association of Realtors, we covered it on a past show, with no actual evidence. So my hat's off to Hernandez here the district attorney for, for saying, hey, I could see how this could happen in right. theory, but we're not going to make a law on theory. I need evidence here that it's to happened. uphold this, that right. it's actually happening yeah. because there is a constitution in Oregon and in America that he has to uphold. And it looks like he did his job and upheld the constitution and the first amendment of sp free speech. To your point though, Nicole, as an agent, you should still talk to the seller about Must. what a circumstance that, you know, would look like where right. you are, you know, breaking the, the law in terms of discrimination. Right. Yeah. Maybe don't, maybe don't text, hey, I want to pick the family. Mm. Mm. Wow. Or, hey, I, I mean, I don't know. I, I think negotiations really should be done over the phone. If you're an agent negotiating tip. Here you go. Do your negotiating over the phone or in person with your clients so that you can have a unrecorded conversation <laughs> and then put the details of what you're trying to accomplish back into writing as a recap, a legal and clear recap of where you're going with the negotiation so that you can use that if something were to happen. But strategizing with your client, do that behind closed doors. Yeah. Do that on a unrecorded Zoom or phone call. It's like you're almost foreshadowing for our marketeer. Ooh, a little bit. Yeah. A little bit. I like a that little, marketeer. A little negotiating. We'll get to like that it. in a little bit. We'll get there. Anything else on the love? On the love? No, letters? it's again, it's it's very it's very interesting, um, and at the very least. Um, this has caused there to be conversations and the, I always like conversations. 
The preliminary injunction ensures the law will remain unenforced as the lawsuit winds its way through the courts. So this isn't we're going to talk about this again in the future. The law's we ultimate are going to fate continue to talk has yet to be decided. So, yeah, uh, there you go. More to come on that. But it looks like a win for uh, the the Pacific Legal Foundation, which was representing Nicole Total Real Estate Group, Oregon based Total Real Estate Group in this was originally filed in November, and there's more to come. And we will certainly bring it to you first as soon as new information. I wonder if that real estate company is really flooding with buyers now, you know? Because here they are. I mean, they were pretty I, much representing every buyer in the state. You, you made a great point. I'd love to know. Maybe we should reach out to Total Real Estate Group. I'd love to know how this lawsuit has impacted business. Has business gone up since November? Have hits to the website gone up? Uh, you know, inquiry leads. You yeah. know, is your ISA department buzzing? Because like, then, then at least, because then at least we can confirm your 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 PR allegation. Mm. Well, my PR allegation w- was focused around the attorney. I thought it was an unwinnable case, mm-hmm. especially in Oregon. And for them to take it on, I thought they were doing it. They're a libertarian group that, that I've never really actually um, seen an attorney, a law office rather. Mm-hmm. Like go out and say, we're a libertarian legal group. So obviously libertarian means like w- we want less government restrictions. I- I've rarely seen a legal group or, you know, a law office brand themselves as a, you know, a political group. There, That, that, that seems odd, but mm-hmm. I, I thought I did think they were doing it for PR. But hey, they they won the first battle. We'll see where it goes. Hats off to them. And uh, and I agree. I had a lot of people when I posted the poll on Instagram, I had a lot of people say they were happy with this, but then a lot of people say that this is agents I'm talking about. Yeah. uh, Discriminatory. So there's still a divide on, on where you sit on this. I've always said, and I said it in past episodes as a listing agent, I just don't want to waste my time with these. But when you're trying to win for your buyer, if you can get an advantage out of it and you can do it legally, go for it. Go for well, and now they and now they can over there in Oregon. Now they can. All right, racket number two: New York Times. Nicole, mm-hmm. why are people getting real estate licenses? So, uh, the the lead is why so many people became real estate agents in the pandemic. The industry is drawing workers, while nearly every other job sector has struggled with hiring. Absolutely, every other job mm-hmm. sector is struggling with hire hiring as few as 10% of them will last long enough as few as 10% <laughs> of them will last long enough uh to make full time living selling homes obviously we know the numbers almost 90% numbers, yeah. of agents fail by their fourth year that's what the new york times is referring to mm-hmm. uh so nicole why why are so many people becoming real estate agents over the last couple of years well, again, in the article, it's sort of, and, and I mean, we were seeing it, right? I mean, restaurants closed down, um, bartenders, you know, obviously weren't able to work. Parents were now having to work from home. So, you know, if you're having to teach your child mm. from home. And so, it, again, it sounded like it was, you know, the whole like flexibility thing. The time was flexible. They were able to be home. They were able to fill their time. Um, and again, and in, and in many states, in all states, um, real estate was booming too. So at a time when, you know, restaurants were shut down and people legitimately didn't, couldn't go to work, this gave them an opportunity to go to work. So I'm not the least bit surprised by it. I mean, we're seeing it on our end too. The amount of people, oh, I will also say, I don't know if it's in here or not, because like usual, I didn't read the entire article, but to get your license was almost easier. Um, Gone are the days that you have to drive to you know, the local, um, association and sit that was there a big for part of it and sit there for three hours, three nights a week. You're now able to zoom in, watch TV probably in the background. Cause who the hell knows it, how they're even knowing that you're in the class. Um, I mean, so it's, it's almost gotten easier now to even get your license. Certainly in my mind, a lot less time consuming. Um, cause again, I mean, even over the last few years, cause with my class, you had to go to the classes. It wasn't uh, like a, It wasn't like you could just pop into any class you wanted. Like you had to go to class. Like it was like college. Like it was three days a week for like three hours or two days, whatever it was. Um, But again, overall, it just became easier. I don't think the Zoom thing is going away either. I don't think the Zoom – I don't think Zoom is going away anywhere in any industry ever. Never. But in this, I mean, 
the, the schools, the people that run these real estate licensing schools realized, wow, I can get so many more people in a class. Oh, yeah. Which brings well, in more revenue. Well, continuing ed now, you know, like you yeah. don't have to rent out a room or, or secure a room or people. Or now it's all all Zoom. Nobody's going to drive Zoom. to get there. It makes yeah. it a lot easier. And real estate licenses were easy to get to begin with. You make yes. it easier. You have people going through disruption. Yeah, you're going to have a huge wave. We're at the peak of the most licensees mm -hmm. ever 1.6 million members of NAR right now. So you've got the most agents you've ever had as we sit here in 2022. My favorite answer when I posed the question, why did so many people become real estate agents in the pandemic on my Instagram? My favorite answer out of all the answers I got was chance to redefine your life after being fired, able to learn during lockdown and the will to move. I love that last part, the will. Mm. The agents that that end up in the 10% that survive are going to have this grit about them, this commitment, this will to actually change their life. I would change being fired with some people just said, you know what? I don't want to be a teacher anymore right. and be holding to the teachers union. I want to take control of if I put in extreme effort I'm not paid the same as the lazy teacher doing nothing. I want to be awarded yeah. for what I am doing or rewarded for what I'm doing. And I think those agents, those 10% that take that mentality into this new career are going to do really well. So I think there's a, there's a reshuffling too of this new wave of agents that is is going to kind of take over here a little bit. You, I mean, real estate has been historically, what, 57 to 59-year-old average age, Nicole? I, I guess, yeah. I mean, You've got yeah. a lot of young people now coming in to the industry, and I'm excited about that. I'm super excited about that, for sure. Let's change the, 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 pop the up, landscape. If you're watching and not, and not listening, if you're watching on YouTube, pop up this little uh, chart here. Where? are people getting real estate licenses. So the greatest change states, Nicole, the top 10 where you've had the most people getting licensed, this is from uh, January 2021 to January 2022. So one year look, mm -hmm. you've got Georgia, Texas, Florida, Arkansas, Wyoming, Alabama, Montana, Missouri, Oklahoma, and Nevada. This is all ac according to National Association of Realtors. The smallest change, the 10 states with the smallest change, Washington, Nebraska, Iowa, Kansas, New York, Maryland, Arizona, Minnesota, Massachusetts, and Washington, D.C. Surprising to see Arizona because that's been a hot market. Not as surprised to see New York. They had so many Yeah, but we're not talking about many, though, Byron. I mean, if you're looking at the numbers, talking about like a, thou a thousand agents difference from one year to the next. Not in Texas, you had 12,000. No, well, we're ta you're talking about Arizona. You're complaining about well, I'm Arizona. Saying, I'm saying it's surprising to see a smallest change. You only had 1,000 new agents. I'm surprised that that change wasn't bigger because Arizona's yeah. market is so good. I'm not surprised to see only you know, 1,500 uh, be added in the time in New York because New York's had a lot of restrictions. That's It's right. a really you know, a hard thing. I'm not surprised with, with Washington, D.C. Washington, D.C. lost agents. Uh, not surprised at that. Um what else would be surprised? I'm surprised Massachusetts only gained a couple hundred. That market's really good. Uh, Florida, no surprise that you've got 15,000 new agents. You got people moving there. Well, Texas. that's because, well, I was going to say, because probably all the agents from Massachusetts were moving down there. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Right? New, New I mean, York and Mass. I mean, look at, look at the Instagram. How many people are opening up these second offices in Florida? Oh, yeah. And they're on the West yeah. Coast. They're on the East Coast. They're on every coast. They're, I mean... We're seeing a lot of agents in the Northeast um, relocating down Myrtle Beach, um, yeah, we uh, Charleston. See it all the time. I mean, it's. I'm actually surprised South Carolina's not on here, but South Carolina, by the way, there's a chart. Maybe we'll do it on the next Real Word about uh, taxes. I mean, South Carolina has been really attractive to Northeast people because the taxes are so low. But we'll we'll save that. That just came out save the taxes. Uh, from Wallet Hub. Yeah, I wanted to do it this week, but 
You didn't, but you didn't post it. Property taxes without. I, I'll, I'll post it on my Instagram story. Then we'll. Oh it. boy. I leak everything on my Instagram story. Now you're cheating. Year. I feel like I need to start leaking. Tell me when you're leaking. I'll leak. Although I can't see you. What's going on, Bobby? My the screens. This you you disappeared, Uh-oh. Byron. You disappeared like 15 you. minutes ago. I can't you're, see you. You're fine. I hate this whole away. Oh my gosh, how funny! Did you see that guy that was like, oh my god, you and Byron are together. They, he was like celebrating our oh, our victory of, of togetherness. I'm happy about yeah. that. <laughs> we'll be back together soon enough. Soon enough. All right, Marketeer of the Week. This is an Inman article, an opinion piece from Christy Murdoch over at Inman. Negotiate better without saying a word. Seven tips for real estate. So we'll go through the list, Nicole. We'll pick our favorite one. All right. Mm-hmm. I'm just going to uh, run through them. Prepare your body language before you walk into the room. Mm hmm. Take a tip from actors and check your facial expressions in the mirror. Watch the other agent for discrepancies in nonverbal communication. Uh, Don't let your eyes give you away. Mm -hmm. Smile and nod to build rapport. Control your inner monologue to keep it from showing on your face. Mm Mm-hmm. And make eye contact with the camera on video and Zoom. Like mm. that one a lot. Mm-hmm. So what's your favorite one? I don't know. They all make me nervous because I have no – I mean, we were talking about this before too. I have zero ability of hiding my feelings. Zero. Yeah. yeah. Z- it is all over my face. And there is – I agree. There's virtually no way of changing that in the moment. Like – it's I I can't I, I I can smile but you still know it's not like a I'm I'm a good sm- like it's so I all all of this if I'm in if I'm in the wrong state is there's it's a disaster. This is where my non-smiling face actually helps me. People can't read me as easily as they can read you. Oh, so if I'm if I'm not smiling, it's like no no you're you're just. You're right about what you're saying. I'm just, it's all over my face. The way that I'm feeling, it the way. It is always all over your face. You, and, and there's no changing. And then the more you ask, the the, the deeper I go. Yeah. In I fact, mean, there was a clip from last week's Real Word where, I don't know if you noticed your face in no. one of the clips that I posted. I was, you know, I was trying to, you know, continue my sentence and you wanted to come in with something and you were really annoyed that I didn't stop talking. <laughs> can't imagine that. Yeah. You never stop talking, so I don't know why I'd get annoyed. Well, I was finishing a sentence though as well. You huh. wanted to you wanted to cut off cut me off in there. <laughs> That's funny. Okay, so to me, I do think so of all of these things though, um you want you want me to pick one? Yeah, pick your favorite of the seven. So I do think that controlling your inner mi- monologue um is probably the most important and I think wow. I and I think that it has less to do with, you know, to keep it from showing on your face. I think, I think there's a lot of listening that goes on and you have mm-hmm. to, and again, I think that sort of wraps into all the other ones, like listening between the lines. What are they not saying? What are they saying? You know, what, what do they mean to be saying? What are they saying, but they shouldn't be saying. So if you're having that inner monologue with yourself, you are missing all of the cues. So, um, in my mind, that's probably the most important for me. Um, is my my inner the inner the inner dialogue? Yeah, I'm gonna go with the first one. Prepare your body language before you walk into the room. Uh, she talks about one of the most watched TED talks ever comes from social psychologist Amy Cuddy, whose Wonder Woman pose is a staple for those who need to gather their power before meetings and negotiations. Oh, it's Wonder like your Woman. favorite guy. Your favorite guy. Who's your guy? Remember, I'm watching him. Um, you know mm. what? What's his name? Come on, the redhead guy. The guy, the redhead guy. Bill, from Billions, like oh, he, uh, Bobby Axelrod. Bobby, he oh, walks in. I mean, and he's Ax. just he he's, owns the room. He does own the room. And and the reason why I'm going to go with body language is because when you're negotiating, when you're on a listing pitch, your body language when you're sitting face to face with somebody is the most important attribute you have. It's not actually what you're saying. It's not actually uh, the tone in which you're saying it, it's how you're delivering it, which does include tone, but it's how you're delivering it, the mm-hmm. feeling that you're giving them as you're explaining what you're going to do and body language is how you communicate. I think there's a study, it's not in here, 
it's not part of this write up. No, but I, I think but when she you're communicating, about... it's like eighty percent is body language. Oh, I'm sure. As opposed I'm to like sure. what you're saying, the words you're yeah. choosing, right, et cetera. I mean, if it was down to the words that we were choosing, I'd be in trouble, right? You you would maybe be in trouble. I could be in trouble. So uh, I think you're in trouble no matter what, though. So that that just that just keeps it fun. I love this Wonder Woman. It's what is it? Uh, National. Women's Day as we record it this, It is right? National Women's Day. Is there yes. a National Men's Day or, or is that a bad thing I to say? I think that's maybe every other day. Is that, that, that's the other 360. <laughs> All right. I got gotcha. you. That's All funny. Right. National. So uh, happy Na- National Women's Day. Yeah, you too. No, I'm saying that to the listeners. If they're, oh, I thought you were saying it to woman. me. I mean, God forbid you. And to you. God forbid. To me as well? Are you saying I mean, them? why not? I guess I could. Yeah. You surround I, yourself with with good strong women. You have a wife oh, and you have daughters and you have a mom. Our whole leadership team is, is women. There's lots of women around you, so. But I thought you were saying I'm a woman. No, I can be I anything I want to like, be. By the you way, you can be anything you want to be. We all yeah. can be anything we want to be. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Okay. Well, I good guess thing. we'll end it on well, that. We went there. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that'll, that'll, be the, uh, uh, that'll be that. That that'll really fix your face. That's how she leads this article. One of my favorite expe- expressions is "fix your face." Mm-hmm. So that'll fix up your face, if nothing mm-hmm. else. Nothing All right. Else. Uh, appreciate you guys. I can't see your face. I don't even know what your face looks no, like right I'm now. Sorry. All right. Pre- appreciate everybody listening or watching. Uh, if you made it this far, I'd love for you to hit the like button on YouTube, consider subscribing, and leave us a comment on your take on this love letter situation. What's your opinion on the ruling in Oregon? Do you think that that's going to last? Uh, do you agree, disagree? Love your take on that. Love Nicole? your take on it. Or I'd love your take if you've ever been in a situation where it came to bite you in the ass, right? Mm. I mean, I'm curious if it has ever, if it, if that situation has ever come up to anybody. You yeah. Know, like I mean, an angry buyer, you know, accusing somebody of something. This, this, uh, district judge rather couldn't find any couldn't evidence find that, right. he, you know, he could connect to that in Oregon. But, uh, there's 49 other states out there. So if you're, an agent in any of those areas and Especially you have evidence, in this I'd love hot to hear market. it. I mean, people are heated for sure. Mm, yeah. A lot of people missing out getting mad. So, yeah. all right. We'll see you guys next week. Bye guys. Real. Bye.